Richard Pratt, founder and president of Third Millennium Ministries and former chair of Old Testament at Reformed Theological Seminary, made a striking comment in a 2010 article entitled, What One Thing Would You Change About Seminary? Pratt declared, if the military trained soldiers the same way that we train our pastors and missionaries and church leaders, they would be dead within a matter of seconds on the battlefield. Simply put, you cannot prepare for hand-to-hand -hand combat while sitting in a classroom. The biblical mandate to increase the health of churches and their capacity to obey the commands of Christ by teaching and training church leaders in sound doctrine and practice demands Field education with true mentorship and accountability. The reason is simple. We all learn more by doing, by putting into practice what we have gained in a classroom. For most institutions, field education is but a small part of the overall curriculum, while the greater proportion of education is delivered in a classroom setting. But what if the time spent in the classroom to that in field education was flipped? Imagine the impact that intentional mentoring and accountability would have on the individual student, the church, as well as the mission. This presentation will focus on three case studies of innovative approaches to providing mentoring and accountability through field education that seeks to keep theological education married to the church. First, let's examine field education from the perspective of a centralized institution. I asked Dr. Godfrey Harold president of Cape Town Baptist Seminary to explain their internship program. I must begin by stating that at Cape Town Baptist Seminary, we have moved away from the concept of theological education to theological training as this more clearly emphasizes our mission to train Christian leaders to transform society publicly. We do this in three ways, training the head, the heart, and the hand, but very intentionally as to where this training leads. We are intentional in our training so that our students lead like Jesus, servant leadership, to lead for Jesus, for his glory and for his church, and to lead to Jesus, integral mission, as part of our evangelism, church planting, and biblical justice track. The aim of the internship program, therefore, is to improve ministerial performance directly. While most South African theological institutions grant a three-year degree, Cape Town Baptist Seminary grants a four-year theological degree. This extra year allows Cape Town Baptist Seminary this space to include a six-month intensive internship program. Why is having field education that emphasizes mentoring and accountability important? This training and this internship program is unique to CTBS. While I believe that our seminary training effectively prepares students for ministry, a theological degree is not enough to prepare stu students or seminarians for the challenge of ministry, leaving them wanting in knowledge and skill. Inadequately trained ministers can significantly impact how they minister, as effectiveness depends mainly on the quality of instruction. Our internship program helps students at Cape Town Baptist Seminary to engage ministry in a safe place. This includes the services of a minister who has extensive practical experience and is and who is also very much involved in ministry. Spending six months shadowing a local minister has shown to have increased the student's resilience, enhanced their communication skills, and, bu and boosted their self-confidence before entering into ministry. This six-month program enables them to see and understand how the classroom learning intersects with practical ministerial experience firsthand. Although the student would have had sufficient academic or theological training before engaging the internship program within the local church setting, it is within this practical component uh, through observation and practice that the student's knowledge and understanding of ministry is strengthened. The internship program plays a, a significant role in developing the student's values, beliefs, and ministry competency. It is shown to have considerable influence in directing the student to their particular strength in ministry. Uh, our internship program has the following functions, orientation for ministry, instruction and guidance towards ministry, personal support within the context of the inter internship program and ministry, and also providing consistent and transparent feedback 
so that areas of weakness could be strengthened. Once a week, uh, the student meets with a mentor and comes onto campus every Thursday uh, for five hours to receive instruction and discuss the previous uh, week's uh, ministry, challenges, and opportunities, but also to engage theory. But in sitting in the classroom once a week to collaborate and compare their personal experiences. One crucial element of the mentoring process is that of communication. The mentor and the director of the program are sensitive to help diagnose the student's readiness for ministry and develop potential solutions. While the student might be excellent in the classroom, spending time in the field will reveal, reveal the inadequacies for ministry. Therefore, the mentor and the director will have to play many roles as observer, role model, counselor, quality controller, critical friend, assessor, and manager. The mentor gives helpful advice to the student to improve the methodology and praxis. This is brought to the student's attention every five weeks when the student again meets with the mentor for evaluation. This evaluation is then reported to the director of the internship program who brings this concern to the student and maps out a way to address these deficiencies. What has been the effectiveness or the results of your field education program? We found the internship program to be mutually beneficial for mentors, students, and the seminary as we work together towards improving strategies, ideas, and ministry learning. The bond between uh, the student and the minister is enhanced, but also we found the bond between the director or the seminary and the minister is strengthened because the minister will bring new ideas to the table for the announcement and further development of the internship program so that the program always remains contextual and relevant. I would advise that, the inter that an internship program like this become an integral part of any theological training at seminaries. Faculty must spend time developing an internship program to cover all, if not all, of the practice of ministry. The program must be contextual and relevant to the context in which the student will minister. For students not interested in engaging practical or pastoral ministry, but want to engage the mission field, then I would meet with uh, the host missionary uh, or an agency through which the student will work as a short-term um, missionary and develop a specific internship track for that particular student. Therefore, the program requires commitment and dedication of the seminary director who oversees the program. To be in consistent communication with the minister, uh, mentor, uh, mission agency under which the student serves his or her internship. Therefore, collaboration between church and seminary is very, very important. So the internship program also serves as an opportunity for ministry placing as students might be called to that specific local church because the mentor has first-hand experience of the student and the student has six months to integrate into the culture of that local church setting. The internship program therefore becomes an important aspect of theological training as we are found to be at Cape Town Baptist Seminary. What advice would you give to other seminarians as they consider implementing innovative approaches to field education? I trust that every institution will develop a program similar to this for the effective training of persons entering into ministry. Thank you for allowing me uh, the privilege of sharing our experiences at Cape Town Baptist Seminary. May the Lord indeed bless you as you seek to do the same. Now let's consider mentoring and accountability through the lens of a decentralized system of delivery as Dr. Stuart Sheehan, president of World Hope Ministries International, shares about World Hope Bible Institute's approach to field education. Dr. Sheehan, please describe for us the World Hope Ministries International and its Bible Institute. World Hope Ministries International is working uh, uh, in about 35 nations around the world and we specifically target helping uh, nationals, those in the local context, uh, set up a self-sustaining ministry where theological training can be replicated. Um, we're, we're trying to fill that gap 
uh, an enormous gap that exists for so many pastors who do not have access to theological education. In your opinion, what is the importance of mentoring and accountability in field education? I think mentoring and accountability is hugely important. Uh, in our system, we're, where we're using a replication model, uh, we are, are going into areas that do not have theological training, uh, do not have adequately trained teachers um, to be able to, to, to educate the students, to see them get through the 16 courses to graduate, and then hopefully a percentage of them then become uh, instructors. So when you're thinking about the importance of, of accountability and field education, for us, it's, a, it's, it's, it's sort of do or die. If we, if we aren't accountable, if we're not mentoring these students uh, in, in learning so that they can teach what they have been taught, uh, then, then the whole thing fails. And I think that's so true for almost all, uh, all types of education. Uh, you know, you, 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 people don't do what you expect, as someone has well said. People do what you inspect. And so mentoring and accountability is very, very important. How does the Bible Institute incorporate mentoring and accountability into its curriculum and delivery system? When we talk about how we incorporate mentoring and accountability into our curriculum, uh, in, in a sense, we would, we would basically say that all types of theological education should be surrounded or encapsulated in, in mentoring uh, because uh, the classroom uh, can have the information and even the concepts and understanding beyond the information. But we all know that in ministry, uh, we, we really know we know what we know when we begin to, when we begin to express it, when we begin to do it, when we put that, that theology, when it comes out of theory and, and it becomes practical theology in the field, working with a family, leading a church, doing the things that we're called to do. Uh, so the way we accomplish that uh, is by working with a group of local leaders in every location where we work around the world who serve as basically a council and they handle the, the, the really the ground part of the work. We're coming to provide the, 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 the course content as we teach, as we do the instruction, but it's that local council that is watching the lifestyles of these, of these students and working with them uh, from uh, between the time we do classes to make sure that there is, is not just information going in, but we're seeing the effects of that in their ministry context. I think also uh, what we try to do in all of our classes is to have ample opportunities for there to be discussion among pastors and leaders. And, and we found that that, that sort of uh, peer accountability as theological truth is, is put in the context becomes very, very important. Uh, we've had many uh, instances where someone winds up teaching something that's contrary to, to the truth. And those students who have been taught the truth um, ha have often gone to those students and call them out on it. And this is really the type of communal uh, accountability that we would love to see in every community where we serve. What has been the effectiveness of the Bible Institute's approach to mentoring and accountability? I think the results have been for us nothing less than than amazing. Uh, we are seeing in in multiple countries around the world third and fourth generation replication uh, across Sub-Saharan Africa. We're seeing multiple second generation and now prepping for third generation uh, replication of theological education. It, it has been for us amazing to see the replication of theological education, uh, a, a basic theological education uh, that those basic things a pastor needs in his toolbox to see that be replicated uh, into thousands of students around the world has been amazing for us. What advice would you give to Sub-Saharan African theological institutions uh, for implementing mentoring and accountability as an innovative field education program. Hey, let's all work together to see the church be a healthy church, because I think we would all agree without a, 
uh, without pastors, without leaders who have theological training, we will persist in having uh, uh, false teaching, prosperity gospel, uh, syncretism. And so let's work together to see how we can uh, complement one another to accomplish the task because the Great Commission has been given to the church and our part uh, that we all do in theological education is with the hope of seeing a healthy church that can reach the nations with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Finally, let's explore field education from a diversified approach to theological education as Dr. Al Jackson, pastor of Lakeview Baptist Church in Auburn, Alabama, details the MDiv and internship program that they held at their local church in collaboration with the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. Dr. Jackson, would you please give us the details of that internship? For 21 years, from 1996 to 2017, we had a, a partnership with Southern Seminary where we would train Master of Divinity students who would come on our staff for three years. And uh, we would integrate them into the life of our church over the course of those three years, expose them to every facet of the life of our church, and then after three years they would graduate with the Master of Divinity degree. So they were getting hands-on training from our staff, and then professors would fly in uh, to uh, Atlanta, a nearby airport, drive down to our city of Auburn, and teach for a couple of days, go back to Kentucky, come back a couple of weeks, do that again. What did you want your students or interns to observe and learn and practice? We also uh, wanted to involve them in, in uh, the different area ministry areas of our church. So each semester, uh, each intern would be assigned to a different uh, person on our staff. For instance, the first semester, you, would, you might be assigned to work with our missions pastor and with our uh, uh, youth pastor. And the second semester, you might be assigned to work with our uh, music uh, minister and our administrative pastor. And the third semester, you might be assigned to work with our international pastor and our preschool director. They would teach you hands-on kinds of experiences in their particular area. The reason we, we did that was it's, it's the pattern, quite frankly, that we, we try to build on, on, the, on uh, that of uh, Jesus and the Apostle Paul. So we wanted these, these young men to see hands-on what our, our pastors uh, here on staff do, observe that uh, as they went about their work. How were the students selected? We, we had an extensive interview process. They had to fill out a, a multi-page questionnaire about their, their background, uh, their beliefs, uh, their churchmanship. Of course, we knew the churchmanship of most of them. We, we graduated 47 over 21 years. Uh, probably 40, 41 of those were already in our church when they came into the internship. They were students at Auburn University and members of our church. So we knew their churchmanship. We knew their character. Uh, but they, were, uh, they had to fill out an application form. They had to interview with me and with the personnel committee of our church. They had to be approved by the personnel committee, by the deacons, and had to be voted on by the church. And uh, everybody that applied did not get accepted, though most who applied did. Where did the students stay during their internship? Uh, they were on their own. Uh, I've asked, been asked that question a number of times. Do you have a, you know, a housing for them or a dorm? We do not. Uh, they managed to find housing during their days as a student at Army University, and uh, I just assumed they could continue to live where they were if they're coming from out of town. Uh, do our internship, they'd find a place to live. We did not have housing for them. They managed to find it on their own. As both a theologian and a longtime pastor, what is the importance of mentoring and accountability in field education? Uh, it's, it's essential if you're going to be faithful to the teaching of the New Testament. I said a moment ago, Jesus had the 12, Paul had his, his traveling missionary team. Uh, we're called to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, uh, Ephesians 4, verses 11, 12, and 13. 
It says that God has given gifted leaders, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to prepare God's people works of ministry so that the body of Christ may be built up. And I think the best way to do that is you, you, you live it before them, you model it, you invest in them, you let them watch you minister. Uh, in fact, the same concept is taught in 2 Timothy 2.2 2, where um, Paul wrote to Timothy uh, to entrust in the things you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who are qualified to teach or train others also. So you have four generations there, uh, Paul to Timothy, Timothy to reliable men, reliable men to others. And it's the whole concept of multiplication as opposed to uh, addition. But there's some things that cannot be taught uh, in a classroom. Uh, you can you can teach uh, systematic theology, Old and New Testament, uh, but people skills, relationship skills, leadership skills, vision casting, uh, personal evangelism and soul winning, these are things that are best taught uh, by having people observe you uh, do these things. So our, our interns uh, would go to, they were involved in all the staff meetings, the deacons meetings, uh, some committee meetings, in fact, most committee meetings, except there would be a few meetings where they were would, would not be included because of the confidential nature of what was taking place in those meetings. But uh, they just saw our church function up close and personal for those three years. What would you say made your internship program innovative? Uh, to my knowledge, we are the only uh, church that had a three-year partnership uh, with a seminary to do it this way. Do I understand uh, that uh, Capitol Hill Baptist Church in Washington, D.C., where my friend Mark Devers, pastor, is uh, contemplating expanding their internship program to be uh, much like what we had here. What was the effectiveness or the results of this internship program? If you could talk to some of the men who, who graduated from our our internship, uh, most uh, are in ministry out of 47 graduates. I think there may be uh, one is deceased. Uh, maybe a couple others are not in ministry, uh, but uh, that's pretty rare to have that high percentage of men. Uh, most are pastors, some are associate pastors, uh, a few are missionaries, and uh, two are on our staff, our youth pastor was a graduate of 2017, and our college pastor was a graduate of 2005. And I'm retiring October 31, and just a few days ago, our church voted to call uh, Brian Payne to be our next pastor. Uh, Brian was in our second uh, uh, intern cohort, graduated in 2002, and for the last 15 years, he's been on the faculty at Boyce College uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. These men are serving the Lord effectively. Is there anything that you would have done differently? I was probably too hard on that first group, and uh, after that, I eased up on them. It's a very intense three years. Uh, quite frankly, you, you're working almost full-time on staff, and you're taking a full load in seminary. Uh, I, I neglected to tell you that after the first year, our interns did a home mission, uh, did a summer of home missions here in the United States, uh, usually in New York City. And after the second year, that was the first year, after the second full year, this, that summer, uh, we scattered them about uh, sub-Saharan Africa, working with our Lakeview missionaries there uh, in Africa. What advice would you give to theological institutions, particularly those that are located in sub-Saharan Africa, who are considering implementing an innovative field education strategy that emphasizes mentoring and accountability? Well, I would say do it. If you really care about the glory of God among all the peoples of sub-Saharan uh, Africa, if you really care about the Great Commission, if you really care about the, the welfare of, of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, you, you must do this. This is biblical. This is what Jesus did. This is what Paul did. Whether you work in a centralized, decentralized, or diversified theological setting, your vision ought to allow for and encourage students to be involved in hands-on field education experience. Mentoring students and holding them accountable as they go through many intensive hours of field education would either make them or break them. Most importantly, such a training would create recruits for kingdom service ready for the battle of gospel ministry. May we be found faithful to this task 
to the glory of the Father in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. Amen.